The North Sea, a region with a punishingly harsh environment, but countless oil and gas reservoirs. One of these is the Shehalian oil field. Though this field used to contribute up to 19 million liters of petroleum per day to the world's energy supply, production was suspended here in 2013. The ship-like vessel that worked this site for 16 years has been removed. But abundant resources are still thought to exist here, so the seabed infrastructure is being renewed and expanded. And a new Floating Production Storage and Offloading Vessel, or FPSO, is being built to defy the rough seas here for the next 25 years. The project centers on the Glen Lion, an FPSO vessel currently being built in South Korea. At the same time, 160,000 square meters of the oil field's subsea infrastructure are being modernized. And a key technological highlight is the turret mooring system, the nearly 100 meter link between the FPSO and the reservoir below. The Glen Lion is nothing short of gargantuan. It's 270 meters in length, as long as two and a half football fields, and can store over 143 million liters of oil. At 154 meters, it's as tall as a 45-story building, and its over 67,000 tons are equivalent to 130 single-family brick homes. Since 2010, its construction has been underway in Ulsan, South Korea, a city that lives primarily from heavy industry. BP, Shell and OMV are collaborating on this major project, with construction being done by the shipyard of Hyundai Heavy Industries. HHI is the world's largest shipbuilder and we have about 50,000 laborers and we have built about 70 ships last year. Work begins here in giant factory halls. The individual elements are produced first, not unlike building blocks. Each of these is gigantic to begin with. Despite their dimensions, the workers have to work within millimeter tolerances. Great precision is needed if it's to fit together to build a giant ship. One member of the team working to restore oil and gas production in the Shehalian field is Florian Noy Norberg. As a cost engineer, he moved to South Korea in 2012 to support the construction project and gather experience. Es entsteht auf jeden Fall auch eine persönliche Bindung zum Projekt, wenn die ersten Stahlblöcke im Trockendock liegen, dann hat man auf jeden Fall nach vielen Jahren der Planung das erste Mal Gefühl, jetzt wird's was, jetzt kann man es erstmal angreifen und dann sieht man das Schiff rauswachsen aus dem Trockendock, das ist sehr ein tolles Gefühl. To have this vessel begin its journey to the North Sea as soon as possible, over 2,000 people work on it every day, welding, soldering, hammering, and sanding. On-site organization is seen to by a 400-person project team led by BP. Its head, Graham Stewart, has been working on mammoth projects like this for over 30 years now. These sort of projects are, are so complicated, it's essential to, to basically have a really good team. And, and we've been lucky, we've got over 400 people here uh, on our team. We've got uh, people from all over the world. Nobody could do it all alone. These new projects are so big that uh, we really need hundreds of people to support our, what we do every day. The Glen Lion may look like a ship, but it isn't one. It doesn't even have an engine to propel it forward. But even so, not a millimeter of onboard space goes unused. Everything's full of pipes and cables because in reality, the Glen Lion is a floating oil and gas processing facility. Its stern houses the control room, living quarters for the crew, and a helipad. Farther forward, four gas turbines provide electrical power. 
Alongside those is equipment including pumps, hoses and tanks. Next is a crude separation unit to clean the oil of water and sand as well as two gas compression modules. And in the bow is the turret, the interface between the delivery pipes coming from the seabed and the vessel itself. Finishing the interior and running countless tests of the equipment are the final steps that take place in South Korea before the Glen Lion departs for its destination, where preparations for its arrival are in full swing. The seabed infrastructure is being dealt with by another team on the other side of the world, in Great Britain. The Scottish port of Aberdeen is one of the main ports servicing North Sea oil platforms, and it's a crucial place for the Glen Lyon project. The Shehalian field is meant to produce 19 million litres of oil daily beginning in 2017, and before then, the seabed has to be prepared as well. The countless flow lines and connections are currently undergoing complete replacement by remote-controlled submersible robots. Elmar Tot is one of the team working to ensure that this infrastructure, installed as far down as 500 meters underwater, will run perfectly for the next 25 years. Die hohe Komplexität des Projektes äh, entsteht dadurch, dass hier alte, 20 Jahre alte Infrastruktur teilweise ausgetauscht wird und neue, moderne Technik installiert wird. Ein Projekt im Nordatlantik, West of Shetland, ist insbesondere dadurch gekennzeichnet, dass nur gearbeitet werden kann, wenn die Wetterbedingungen passen. Und das geht eben nur ungefähr von April bis Anfang Oktober. Es gibt keine Zeit, um etwas zwei oder dreimal zu versuchen. But in the North Sea, preparing is only half the challenge. The massive waves also tax oil platform workers to the absolute limit. Barry Jones, now part of the Glen Lyon team, knows what it means to work in the North Sea. When we're, we're on the vessel, and the vessel is moving around so violently, we have to secure everything as much as we possibly can on the vessel, which means we can't really work. The biggest problem that we would then have is a lack of sleep and a lack of rest for the guys who are working on these, on these shift patterns. So we have to be very, very mindful and very, very careful that we're looking after the crew as best we possibly can. From 2017, the Glen Lyon crew will also start their work on the high seas by traveling from Aberdeen. They are exceptionally qualified specialists who will have to conquer the difficult conditions of the North Sea and the isolation in addition to their demanding work. By that time, around 10 years will have gone by from conception of the Glen Lion to its being put into operation. Hevik Kola represents the interests of OMV in this joint venture. Eine Joint Venture Struktur ist heute eigentlich die gängigste Form, große Öl- und Gasprojekte zu machen. Es sind riesige Investitionen, die getätigt werden und man möchte das Risiko nicht alleine auf sich nehmen. Darum sucht man sich Partner, die in ein Projekt mit hineingehen und einen Anteil der Kosten übernehmen und dann natürlich später auch einen Anteil des Gewinns bekommen. One of the Glen Lions highlights is its turret mooring system. It took three years to build this nearly 100 meter construction in Singapore and then install it in the vessel in South Korea. The Glen Lion will receive its oil and gas from the seabed wells via 21 flexible pipelines known as risers but it will also have to withstand up to 10 meter waves and gusts of wind in excess of 100 kilometers per hour. And that's where the turret comes in. The turret bundles all the risers coming up from the seabed and forms a flexible connection with the ship. This lets the Glen Lion rotate like a weather vane to face the waves while the turret stands still in the middle. 
meaning that even in the worst conditions, the risers are never endangered by rough seas. The turret system lets production continue undisturbed in almost any weather. Sophie Merlin is one of the engineers who have accompanied this important part of the Glen Lion from its very first drawing board sketch. When I look at the turret, I'm, uh, I'm quite proud, proud of it because uh, I was involved in all the integration procedure. So now we are ready to complete the work and to start the commissioning of all systems. The team is also working to ensure that the oil and gas there can be extracted in a highly efficient manner. One of those responsible for implementing this modern technology is Michel Rosen. On Glen Lion, there are a lot of new technology on the boat. So new technology is the enhanced oil recovery. So this technology will allow to increase the recovery factor of the reservoir. Following its completion, the next step for the Glen Lion is a three-month tow behind three ocean-going tugboats to the Shehalian Field in the North Sea, where this floating production, storage, and offloading vessel will spend at least the next 25 years working in one of the world's most inhospitable places. Once it's arrived, everything will depend on the person who takes responsibility for the vessel and its crew, someone like Phil Gray. It's my second home. I, uh, I will be living there for six months of the year, so I'm very proud of the achievement, not only from Hyundai in constructing this, but also the thousands of people that have gone into creating this. Um, it's pretty inspiring when you see what we can actually do over a period of time.